In this lesson we're going to look at compounds. First of all, let's look at the definition for a compound. Well, a compound is a substance which is made of two or more elements, they've got to be different elements, which are joined together chemically in a fixed ratio. Now, a classic example of a compound that you're all familiar with is table salt, sodium chloride, and so compounds are made when different elements react together in a chemical reaction. So sodium chloride is made when sodium reacts with chlorine. And when it does so, sodium and chlorine atoms combine in a fixed ratio, as indicated in this diagram. So in this particular case, you can see that for every sodium atom, there's one chlorine atom. So the formula for sodium chloride is NaCl, okay? Always in this fixed ratio, right throughout the structure of the crystalline solid. So we've got this one-to-one -one fixed ratio. Now, one thing that we can always say about compounds is that their properties, their chemical properties and their physical properties are always different to the properties of the elements from which they're composed. So for example, sodium is a very reactive metal while chlorine is a highly toxic gas. If you were to ingest, for example, a piece of sodium, it definitely wouldn't do you any good at all. If you were to breathe in chlorine gas, it could be very dangerous. It could cause really serious lung damage. But sodium chloride is actually quite a healthy substance. In fact, our body needs sodium chloride, providing you don't eat too much of it. Okay, so in fact, in Spanish, the word for health is salud, and the word for salt is sal. And so you can see that the root of the word salt is actually health. Okay, it comes from Latin for health. So the properties of sodium chloride are very different from those of its component elements. We'll understand a lot more about why that is when we go on to look at the reactivity of the elements in the periodic table in the context of atomic structure. Now, not only can compounds be crystalline solids, as in the case of table salt and many other substances that you'll come across in your GCSE syllabus, but compounds can also be liquids and molecules. For example, hydrogen will burn in oxygen to form water, okay? And as you know, water is a molecule. So a compound can be a liquid and it can be a molecule. And in this case, the atoms in the molecule are joined in a fixed ratio, okay? So in the water molecule, for every atom of oxygen, there are two atoms of hydrogen. Likewise, compounds can also be gases, as in the case of carbon dioxide, which is formed when carbon burns in oxygen. Again, as in the case of water, carbon dioxide is a molecule and a compound in which the atoms are joined in a fixed ratio. This time, every atom of carbon is chemically joined to two atoms of oxygen. 